In this video, we're going to be using Visual Basic to make a dice rolling simulator. And basically, it's this little app here, and you press the roll button. You see a couple of dice appear, and you get a couple of random numbers. As you keep clicking roll, hopefully every time that I click it, you get different numbers appearing. Okay, so it's just a simulator of rolling two dice. So you've got a little progress bar at the bottom that just runs through, and when it gets near the end, dice will stop being rolled, and the numbers will appear. Pretty straightforward. Uh, let's get to it. So I'm just going to make a new project today. Choose Visual Basic from the left column and Windows Forms app from the middle column. Give it a name like Dice Roller, whatever you want to call it, and browse for a place to save that. It should be in your documents somewhere where you save it. And if you want, you can make a new folder for it as well called Dice Roller. Press OK when you're ready. And we've got an empty form ready to create our app with. And before we start creating our app today, what we need to do is bring in a few pictures. Okay, and the pictures I've found for you online, just on Wikimedia. And it's these six faces of the dice. Okay, we need these little pictures in our app. So to bring them into our app, we need to go up to the project menu at the top. Go all the way to the bottom and choose dice roller properties. And then choose the resources tab on the left here. From the top uh, little bar, we want to choose images. And the next button across it says add resource. We just click on the arrow and choose add existing file. And we're going to add those six dice faces into our um, app. So click on open. You'll see them pop up here in this window, which means they are ready to go. Okay, so you can go back now to the form one tab and we can keep working on our form. Alright, so while we've got our form selected, we might as well head over to our properties here and give it some um, names and a bit of text. So in the text box here, we just want to call it Dice Roller. And you can see that changes our text at the top of the little window. And you want to give that form a name as well. So instead of Form 1, call it FRM Dice Roller. Alright, that's looking good. Let's get uh, the progress bar in next. because It's going to go on the bottom of our page. Okay, so when you bring in the progress bar, give it a name, let's call it PRG progress bar, I guess, whatever you want to call it. And while you're still in the properties here, just look under the layout section and you'll see the dock option. At the moment it's set to none, I want you to click on that drop down box and choose the bottom section. So it docks itself to the bottom of your window. Okay, so you can resize that window and the progress bar will resize with it. Uh, that's our progress bar in. The next thing we'll put in is a little button. So when we press it, it will roll the dice. So when your button's in, just resize it a bit, make it nice and big. And the text that goes on that button will just be the word roll. And the, oops, and the name for our button will be BTN roll. Okay, so that's it there. That's all we need to do for our button. The last things we need to bring in are two picture boxes that go at the top for our dice to appear. So find a picture box, come and put it across there like so, give it the name Pick Dice 1, and the size, we just want to make it a square, so you can resize it if you think you're pretty accurate, although I would be going down to your properties in the layout section here, and we're looking for the size, at the moment it's 100 by 103, I'm going to make it 150, 150, and that means it's 150 height, 150 width. Okay, so you learn up with something about that size. Once you've got that one in, just copy it and then paste it. So you've got a second picture box. And just rename this one to Pick Dice 2. Okay, leave it at the same size. You can now just adjust your window a little bit, get everything fitting in a little bit nicer. That's roughly how I want your app to be looking at the moment. So the next thing we need to do is add a bit of code. Okay. Actually, before we do that, I forgot one thing. In our toolbox, we need a timer. So just grab a timer and drag it and drop it somewhere on your page, and you'll see that a timer appears down the bottom here. Just pop across and give it the name TMR Timer. You don't have to change any other settings. They're all good. All right, so the first thing you want to do is double-click on the roll button. We just need one line of code on the roll button today, and that's to start our timer. So I'll just write in TMR Timer dot start okay and you can open and close a bracket as well if you don't put that in visual basic will put that in for you and that basically gets our timer started when our timer gets started 
that's when we can put in some more code. So, heading back to my Form 1 tab at the top here, I'm going to double click on TMR Timer. And we can start to type in some of the code once our timer gets ticking. Alright, before we do that though, I'm just going to go to the top up here where it says Public Class Form Roller and press Enter a couple of times. We just need to declare a few variables that we're going to be using in our app today. So DIM will declare in memory a couple of variables. First one's dice one. Okay, and dice one is going to be an integer. So declare dice one as integer, and we're also going to do the same for dice two as integer. Now I might show you here just a quicker way to write this. Okay, if you've got some variables that you're declaring, and you know that they're both going to be integers, there's no need to write it a second time like this. What you can do after dice one is simply put a comma and just write dice two. So what that does now is declares two variables, dice one and dice two, as an integer, and it saves you just writing that extra line of code. So feel free to do that in future programs if you would like. We also have to declare another variable called random. And we're going to set that as random. Okay, pretty easy one there, and basically that's going to help us um, come up with random numbers uh, when we roll our dice. Alright, so there are all the variables that we need to set, so we can go back down to our timer tick function down here. Okay, so go in between the gaps there, and we can start writing in our code. Alright, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write random equals new random. Now on the next line, we're going to work on this progress bar, so prg progress bar dot increment, and then in brackets, you just want to tell it how fast uh, you want to roll the dice. So the higher the number, the faster it's going to roll the dice, but I'll just go 5 for now. Anything less than 5 will still look good. Anything over 5 might be rolling the dice just a little bit too quick. Alright, and still working on the progress bar, we're going to go down a couple of lines and do an if-then statement. So we're going to say if the progress bar dot value is equal to 100 so that means the progress bar has worked its way through to the end this value is 100 and then what do we want to do well we're going to stop our timer so it'll be timer dot stop we also want to change our progress bar back to zero so we'll change progress bar dot value to zero okay and that means it's ready to roll the dice a second time Okay, if that progress bar isn't at 100, okay, so if we aren't quite at the end of the progress bar yet, so we write the word then, oh, sorry, not then, we write else, sorry, my mistake, so that means the progress bar is still working its way up, then we're going to keep rolling our dice, we'll keep shuffling them in our hand, basically, so dice one will equal random dot next and in brackets we're going to write 1 comma 7 now I would have thought we'd write 1 comma 6 so I could choose a number between 1 and 6 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 but for some reason you have to write 1 comma 7 so that it chooses a number between 1 and 6 some weird thing that Visual Basic does anyway we'll just roll with it no pun intended alright so dice 1 equals random dot next and then it's going to pick a number between 1 and 7, so in theory 1 and 6, and the same for dice 2. Okay, and we'll just keep rolling those dice around in our hand, waiting to pick a number. We'll just keep flashing through all the different numbers at random until our progress bar reaches 100. When it does, our timer will stop, our dice will also stop being rolled, and they will end up with a number sitting on the screen. Okay, but that's not all of the code yet. Okay, after where we wrote those brackets 1 to 7, we're going to add in a whole heap of if-then statements so that the pictures of the dice actually appear on the screen. So we start with if dice 1 equals 1. Okay, so this is this one here. So if the timer stops and the number equals 1, then we want the pick dice 1, so the little picture box 1, dot image will equal my dot resources dot and you can just choose the underscore one here. Let's double click on it. 
So that's basically saying it's looking in that resources folder that we went to before. So up here in our properties, it's looking in this resources folder for the number one dice face. That's all that's saying. Okay. Let me write in else if on the next line. Actually, that shouldn't be sitting like that. There we go. That looks a bit better. Just didn't format properly. So else if. So we're just doing another if statement we are. So the dice isn't always going to end up on one. Could end up on two, three, four, five, or six. So we need to worry about those now. So else if uh, dice one, oops, dice one equals two. Then pick dice one dot image equals my dot resources dot and then double click on the underscore two. So that's now saying if dice one lands on a two, then the picture in the first dice box there will be the number two dice face. Hopefully you're starting to see where we're going with this now. So we write else if again. This time will be if dice one ends up on the number three, then pick dice one dot image equals my dot resources dot underscore three. Hopefully you're getting the idea. You should be able to copy and paste a bit now if you want, if you're getting the idea. So I'm just going to go down to the next line and I'm going to change the number three to four. And the number three to four. Next one, change those threes to fives. And finally, change those threes to sixes. So now we've got every option um, covered. So if the sorry, if the dice ends up on one, then the first picture of the dice will show up as the number one face. And likewise, 2 and 2, 3 and 3, 4 and 4, 5 and 5, 6 and 6. Okay, so when you're done after that sixth one, just write end if and press enter. Now going down, we need to worry about our second dice face now. Okay, so I wrote end if too many times here, I'll just delete one of those. So I might just try and test it here, I don't know if this is going to work. Hopefully we get no errors, we'll see what happens. If I click roll, there we go, we do get our first dice working. It just rolls through a whole bunch of different numbers. So our random timer is just running through while our progress bar is going up. Finally it stops, ends up with a number 6. So it displays the number 6 uh, dice face. Right, so we've got one of them working. The second dice face is done in a very similar way. So this time we're just going to write if dice 2 equals 1, then pick dice 2 dot image equals my dot resources dot underscore 1 again. Okay, and once again, we'll be doing a copy and paste job in a moment. So the next line will say else if, and we're going to write dice 2 equals 2, then Pick dice two dot image equals my dot resources dot underscore two. Okay, now we can copy and paste this else if line. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just change these twos to threes, then on to fours, then on to fives then on to sixes. Okay, so now we've got in the piece of code that will deal with dice number two. If our timer lands on a one, then we show the number one dice face. If we land on number two, then we show the number two dice face. And so on all the way through to number six. Should have an end if just here at the bottom. I think Visual Basic will put that in automatically for you. Then we've got another end if here that ends this big if. And we've got the end sub and end class, which ends our program off. So that should be it for our little dice roll. Let's just click start and see what we get. Quick roll, and there's our two dice faces rolling up. 
Not sure why the progress bar doesn't go quite to the end. It seems to stop around three quarters of the way. Never mind. Seems to be working fine still. So our dice are rolling. That's what we're after. Alright, so we'll close that up. Make sure you save that up and you are done.